Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 16. Father, I ask you to anoint this word. Let it be a source of encouragement for your people. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father. I thank you and I bless your holy name. I praise you, Lord. And Lord, I'm leaning on you because I am not dependable enough, but you are always faithful and dependable. And we're asking you, Lord, to see to it, your people hear what you have to say to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. God knows that there's a whole lot of mess going on in this day and age. There's a whole lot of stuff blowing in the wind. A whole lot of threats, a whole lot of clouds of doom and gloom, a whole lot of prophecies of doom and gloom and tragedy, disaster, wars and rumors of wars and financial collapse and sickness and death. I mean, it's, it's all over the place. Demonic infiltration. It's all over. It's just looks like everything's going helter skelter. It's going cuckoo. Now. What I want to say to that, or let's say what God wants to say to that, be still. While everything else is shaking, you be still. You calm your little happy hips down and be still. Take up your faith. Don't drag it on the ground behind you. Pick up your faith and walk, baby, with your head up high. Because God is the lifter up of your head. God is your strength. God is your refuge. And with that, we are going to Psalms 46. Psalms 46. We're going to do a lot of word today. So I hope it doesn't bore you. Because your spirit will be fed even if you feel like you're getting bored. Now this is a short chapter, so I'm going to read the whole thing. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Remember that word streams. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. Let me stop there. Add my two cents. When all is shaking around you, all hell is breaking loose. You will not be moved. You will not, you will not be shaken off your foundation. God knows how to take care of what belongs to him. And he knows who you are. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cuts the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. I don't care what the threat is. God can blow on that threat and it's gone. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. 
The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Listen, you guys, God, he does not want us being blown around by every wind of doctrine, blown around by this bad news, that bad news, our knees quaking in the wind. He does not want us tripping. Isaiah chapter seven says, after the threat, the threat is quoted to him. And it says that they are getting ready to have the rug pulled out from under them. And they listen to the news and it scares them. And they said that the king and the people's knees shook like the wind, like the leaves in the tree. They were so scared. But what was God's reaction to that? In Isaiah chapter seven, verse seven, it says, this is what God said about that. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. God has to allow it, you guys. I don't care what the government has got going, what the Illuminati has got going. I don't care about the new world order and the one world currency and the one world religion and all this stuff they got going, all their little secret agendas. God said, he maketh wars to cease. Listen to that. Listen. Go down to the next sentence. He, the next part of the sentence. He breaketh the bow. So picture a bow and arrow being uh, somebody with a bow and arrow or a crossbow shooting at me to destroy me. And I see the arrow coming and I catch the, the arrow in midair and just take it and use my two hands and my knees and just break it in two. It's good for nothing. What was meant to kill is now worthless. That's what God is saying. Listen, we have no idea the ways that God protects us from dangers seen and unseen. He says, he cutteth the spear in sunder. That means he cuts it in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Imagine big army tanks coming down the street, getting aimed right at our houses, getting ready to blow. God can blow on that tank and make it melt from the heat he blows on it. We have no idea the defense, the lines of defense we have with God on our side. See, the Bible says, if God be for you, who, 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 who can be against you? It's almost like the Bible's talking head, like we do in the streets. Man, I got this. So what you got? What you know? Bring your best, baby, because it ain't nothing compared to what I got for you. And that's what the Bible is saying. No matter what, if God be for you, who can be against you? Come on. Don't make me laugh. Huh? Make my day. All right. So listen, let's go to Ezekiel 47. And this is, to me, I call it the magic formula. <laughs> Ezekiel 47 will show you just how to remain in that state of in, within that line of defense where the enemy can't even come near you. He can't do anything. To, he can't suck anything from you. He can't steal anything from you. He can't kill anything in you. And he cannot destroy you because you will not be moved. Listen, Ezekiel 47. It's not going to be a long word. I don't want to wear everybody out, but I do want to lift your spirits. Now this, I have to read the whole thing. So this is one of those, a lot of reading words. And, you know, like I said, don't get bored. Listen to what it's saying. Picture it in your mind. After he brought me, this, the angel of the Lord brings him to the, the uh, body of water. After he brought me, Ezekiel is speaking. After he brought me unto the door of the house. This is starting at verse one. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. 
picture, picture God's house, so to speak. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without, that means on the outer section, unto the other gate, the, the furthest away gate, by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran out waters. Waters were running from it on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Now he's wading in the waters like we do at the beach when the waves come in and touch our ankles and wet up our feet. Listen, again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. That's why I wanted you to remember what 46 said when it said, the water, the stream shall make glad the city of God. This is the living water that flows from the bosom of Christ. Okay, listen. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters and the waters were to the knees. The waters are rising, aren't they? Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters were to the loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. In other words, couldn't be walked over, but it could be swam through. And he said unto me, son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very, very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth which moveth whithersoever the river shall come. And that's why you must stand, live, move, have your being in the living waters of Christ. Listen. Uh, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. Let me read that again. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, another form of talking about people, because these waters shall come thither, and for they, for they shall be healed, and everything that live whither the river cometh. Wow. Everything shall live wherever. It's another way of saying wherever the river moves. And it shall come to pass that the fishes shall stand upon it from Engadi, even unto Engelame, <laughs> I don't know what he's saying, uh, they shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea exceeding many. But here's the part that you must stay away from, and this is what comes from sin, from allowing the little foxes to spoil the vine the little allowances you give yourself, the little freedoms you give yourself, the excuses, all the things you excuse, your behavior, you know God wouldn't be pleased with, but you got an excuse for it. But the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river, upon the bank thereof, and on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So you've got water to satisfy. You've got the fruit, right? To strengthen you and to, to nourish you. And you've got the leaf for healing. See, God does everything. He gives you inner satisfaction. He sustains you and he heals you on the inner man. 
That's what those waters bring into your life. That's what comes from being engulfed by those waters. You don't hang around the marshes. You don't straddle the fence and play tiddlywink with the world standards, tiddlywink with your flesh's desires, and, and then dabble in the Lord to keep him happy. No. All right. You're either going to get wet or you're going to get dirty. Look at it that way. I just want you to think about God's living waters. See, God makes all the difference. It doesn't matter what's going on. Let me let me share this little quick story. When we first moved in this house, we had this big giant pine tree. It was wreaking havoc. The branches were so big. It was wreaking havoc on both my house on the roof and on the roof of my neighbor's house. So we had a fair exchange in certain parts of the year. His tree messed up my yard. And on other parts of the year, my tree messed up his yard. We were like, yeah, whatever, Mother Nature. So no big deal. But listen to this. I did not want damage to be done. So I asked the Lord, listen, I did not have $1,500 or $2,000 to get somebody to climb up on that tree and trim down all the dangerous branches. I did not have the money. So I asked God to make a way where there is no way for that to happen. God is all the difference, you guys. One of the guys from the church told me that he knew some guys that 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 chopped down wood in that I mean they actually had the equipment they did it for a living but these guys were homeless and they just wanted some food they just wanted some spending change and he went and got them he charged me check it out the tree is oh boy the tree's got to be about 80 to 120 feet tall that's how tall it is and we won't talk about how wide that baby was. They got up on the ladder with those, you know, I forget what you call them. But anyway, they trimmed all the dangerous branches. They brought them down to the ground. They chopped them up. They did everything. And on top of that, they hauled it all away and cleaned up my yard. They did all that for one hundred dollars when god has a blessing for you you don't have to have the money all the time you don't have to have the strength you don't have to have the know-how you don't have to have the expertise all you need is god he makes the difference he levels out the playing field when things are too far away from you to reach, God will bring that baby towards you. Well, all you got to do is receive, just like this house. There is no way that Milton and I could have gotten in this house. We had no connections. Every place we put in offers, somebody with money, big money, would pay cash and pull the thing right out from under us so we never even got anybody to accept our offer because the money yeah yeah their money was talking baby I'm, our change was strange they had the money when money talks money walks i mean it gets things done but when you don't have the money you don't have the connections. You don't have the wherewithal. Your back is up against the wall and you got a limited time before you got to get out your house because it's in foreclosure. Guess what? God tapped me on my shoulder, told me, turn on your computer. I didn't have any connections. I had the connection. Turn on your computer. I got something for you. And we ended up this house is almost worth $200,000. We got it for 68. At the bottom of the real estate market, while everybody was hitting the panic button, going through hell, God was using that hellish experience to be a blessing to two people that couldn't, didn't have a pot or a window financially and made a way where there was no way. When God has something for you, it is for you. 
I don't care what happens in the country, what happens in the government, what you don't get from the government, what problems arise from this, that, or the other. I don't care what happens with this volcano over here and what happens with the earth shaking over there. I don't care what happens with the fires over, over yonder. All the crazy things going on and all the demons breaking loose and the curses and the, and the witchcraft and, the, and the, the Wicca and all this stuff going on. No matter what, no matter what, God is in the midst of her. Hmm. God will help her and that right early. Remember, God is on your side. God is on my side. We are not to fear what is going on in this day and age. God knows how to take care of what belongs to him. God knows how to shield us, protect us, surround us with songs of deliverance, provide for us. Do you hear what I'm saying? God knows how to empower us, encourage us, minister to us, strengthen our faith. God knows how to instruct and guide us. He knows how to block. If we're heading in the wrong direction, he knows how to block it. Every house we were not supposed to have, God blocked it. But the one we were supposed to have, he made sure nobody wanted it but us. I didn't even want it. But I knew God enough to know that he knew me enough to know that even if it was something that I didn't like at first sight, he knew that over time, I would create something out of it that I fell in love with. And I'm in love with this house. And it's still a work in progress. So what I'm trying to say to you, trust God, no matter how hopeless it looks, no matter how useless it looks, no matter how how difficult it is for you to even imagine a solution to that or that. No matter how difficult it is for you to come up with a resolution, for you to find the help, for you to find the means, don't worry about it. You don't have to find anything. All you got to do is ask and God will point you where the help is. We did not have closing costs. God led us where to go for the closing cost. And the money was right there. We were able to close in time. And we moved, I think it was two weeks before the short sale was totally done at the house. Or the short sale was done two weeks before we moved. But the bottom line is it allowed us 30 days. And I think we took two weeks to get out. So the, and with the closing cost, there was an allowance for moving. See, God knows how to throw all the little pieces together. You don't have to figure this thing out. This isn't a computer game. This isn't a uh, uh, price is right. You got to guess everything right to win the prize. No. The only thing you got to know, he is God. Be still and know that I am God. God will be exalted in the middle of all the chaos. God will rise above it all and handle your business. The battle is the Lord's, not yours. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is really for you? Do you believe that God loves you? Listen, that's what you have to do. Get into that inner sanctum with him and ask him constantly, to reveal his love to you to the point where you have no more doubt. Now, we're going to doubt a whole lot of things in this life. I grant you that. But the one thing you don't want to have to worry about is where God stands with me. When you know that you know that you know where God stands with you, no matter what comes at you, baby, it's on a cracking because God's got me. I may not like everything that goes down. I may not like his method, but he's got me and it's all going to work out for my good. No matter what, because I love God and I'm called according to his purpose.
You stand on God's word. You stand on his promises. But you got to read them to know what they are. Hello. Amen. And you start praying and pouring your heart out to God. That's word. You pour your heart out. And you ask him to lead you to scripture and encourage you. He is the lifter up of your head. 